Hey everybody, welcome to another dark and light video. Today we're going to be doing some taming and some other things, specifically remodeling the house a bit more and playing around with the forging workbench. So yeah, we're going to be focusing on trying to get the Mastodon and the Bear today, which are both kind of lower level tames, but we've never gotten them, so I said might as well get it off the checklist, add it to our little zoo. So we're going to be getting those two today, but first we're going to be playing with the forging workbench which we can make, it's kind of like the same forging skill tree by eating those frozen crystal cores, which is really, really cool. So this basically makes us be able to enchant our weapon, or not our weapons, our clothing. I don't know, maybe weapons too. Honestly, I don't even specifically know what it is. I'm super confused about it still, but uh, basically there's these spots around the map, these energy key lines, or I don't even know what they're called. They're just like... These black, this black kind of ore that sticks out and it kind of has like energy pulsing out of it. So basically on the map, and again, forgive me if I get anything wrong because I'm not an expert at this. And here you can see me on screen getting the materials together to make it. But basically some of them are powered and some of them are not. And I think they just power over time. So basically you just have to find the one that's powered at the time. And you have to actually take this forge there. You can't actually just put this forge anywhere you want it has to be at that specific location and you'll see me try it right here you can't place it down anywhere you actually need to go to one of these spots and then once you once you find one that's actually energized you can place it down there and using alloy made from the refining forge you could actually I think enchant your things now this might be completely wrong if so forgive me of course I'm not an expert I'm just doing a playthrough of it and or I forgot to mention, this is another video where we're kind of be talking over my footage because I was actually too lazy to record it live. But yeah, but this is what I'm talking about. These energy key lines, or am I reading that right? Anyway, so this one you could see is not powered, but this one is powered. So that's the difference between them. The kind of, you can kind of like look at it. This one is powered. You kind of just place it. it has a really weird look, but basically you put a piece of equipment in there and you need the alloy from the refining forge which i don't have on me sadly uh so we're not gonna be playing with it today but we will be playing with it later and here you can see i actually if you guys remember last episode i left my nidhog at the dungeon so of course i went back to get that because i can't believe i forgot one of my creatures at the volcano which is really dumb of me but anyway so that's basically it for the uh the refining workbench we're going to be playing with it in a little bit but for now we're actually going to get to the taming of the bear and mastodon now here's the thing about today's episode i originally wasn't even prepared to tame a mastodon i was actually on my way to go tame down a bear on the way there i saw this thing and i'm like hmm I'm pretty sure you can tame this. So I said, you know what? Why not? Let's give it a try. And now if you remember the Bargesh and Unicorn Tames, this is the exact same thing. The first one that I have here, this Mastodon, it actually gets killed because it runs out into the river towards like three Death Stalkers. And in my attempt to kill the Death Stalkers, I accidentally kill the Mastodon. But, if, but of course, if I didn't attempt to kill the Death Stalkers, the Death Stalkers would have killed the Mastodon on its own. But the second one, you can see here, I do end up taming. And like I said, it's fairly an easy tame. Uh, it doesn't do much damage, and you can basically outrun it. Uh, you, you could use the Entanglement spell, uh, but in my opinion, it's not really necessarily needed because it's a fairly uh, like non-harmful non tame. It's basically a bigger Longhorn. But here you can see me just kind of outrunning it on foot, hitting it with a bunch of arrows. And it doesn't take too many. It falls pretty quickly here. See, it's already running away because of its uh, uh, constitution. But here you can see it kind of just falls. And yeah, we just got to put a trough down. And this is a herbivore, so you just put down some grass, apples, or, you know, the herbivore feed. But we're going to skip over the entire taming process here because... Like I always say, nobody wants to watch that bar go up. But bam, here's the Mastodon. Now here's the one thing is that I did not have the saddle for it. So yeah, we're going to have to dry or get it back home and make the saddle there. You can see me here running in my house trying to make the saddle. We made the bear saddle, but like I said, I actually wasn't prepared for the Mastodon. But you know what? 
I'm glad I got it. It's another thing off the checklist, of course, and more content. But you can see here the Mastodon saddle. It's not that expensive. Basically, it just takes some iron and some mithril. Probably the hardest thing to get in that pile is basically iron. In my opinion, mithril is supposed to be like a tier above iron, but I think mithril is way easier to get than iron because it's more accessible. I don't know if that's just me, but yeah, here you'll be able to see we got all the materials together. Almost. I'm pretty sure I am one hide off. I was actually kind of tilted. I need 150 hide. I had 149. So in the video, I was a little bit ticked. Like seriously, I had to do all of this just for one more hide. But we do end up making it. And you'll see me here saddle up the Mastodon. And it's a pretty cool creature. Basically, it's literally an elephant. Like, I, I don't even know why they called it a Mastodon. I don't know if they didn't have elephants in fantasy worlds. But it, it's, it's literally an elephant. I mean, look at it. Now, here's the thing about it. It's actually not that useful. It's literally... It's just a giant creature. Of course, you can farm with it, but it's faster farming with just your tools basically but here you could kind of see me jump on now what is cool about it is you get pretty high so you have kind of have like a bird's eye view of things but of course i mean you can just fly but you can see me here trying to take down some trees so you can farm with it but in my opinion there's really no point might as well just use your tools but it's a pretty cool mountain here i like i have no complaints about it and of course i'm going to put some food in it before we leave but next up we have to get the bear. Now, the bear, unlike the elephant, caused me some trouble. Like, I swear, the bear was 100 times harder to tame than Infernus Dragon, which is kind of sad to say considering the Infernus Dragon. But I didn't include it in the video because, I, again, I didn't really want to show pointless footage. But when I went to the bear, I actually got killed once. And my body ended up in the water with a bunch of fish that were trying to kill me. And I couldn't get it. And I had a lot of trouble. So I had, like, two attempts at this. Uh, but I'm just going to show here my third attempt to get the bear, the one that works, of course, because there's no reason to show my failed attempts. I also did get another hive. I kind of just found one out in the wild, so you know what? I said, screw it. I'll grab it. Why not? Uh, but here you can see the bear trying to track me down. Now, the annoying thing about this bear is if it does manage to hit you, it puts a slow effect on you. So basically, if you get hit and you don't have the entanglement spell, you're dead because it'll hit you, you'll have a four second slowdown, it'll just keep mauling you, and every time it mauls you, it gives you more of a slow. So basically, you're dead unless you kill it or you have an entanglement spell. And luckily, I do have an entanglement spell. And you can see here, I actually did get hit, and I had a slow, but then I entangled it, ran around the rock, and I ended up being completely fine, which is good. But it should be falling in a minute here. Good thing no death stalkers are around. Which is actually what happened with the Mastodon and did happen with the first time with this bear. Except the bear killed me, not the Deathstalker. But, yep, it went down. Of course, put the trap down. I have plenty of meat on me. Didn't make the same mistake uh, with the Inferno Dragon. I have plenty of meat on me. But, yep, I'm just going to skip right over it. Here is the bear all saddled up. Well, now it is saddled up. And this is pretty much just like any other creature at this point. It's not super, super valuable. Uh, its weight isn't really amazing. Its health isn't really amazing. It's basically like a Bargesh of the mountains. Because how I split up the map, I know there's a lot of different zones. I basically only split it up into four sections. The humans with their mountains, the cold mountains, the dwarves with basically those like giant pillars of stone and the dragon island. The elf place and their fields and the volcano. It's basically how I split up the map. For the elves, I have the Bargeshes. For the humans in the mountains, they basically have these bears. In my opinion, their stat line is almost close, like almost similar. But here you could see the actual bear itself. Kind of cool, not too fast. Literally nothing special. So it's just going to be on another addition to the farm. You can see here, it doesn't fit through the door. So I just kind of go around with the additions that we made. And we're going to put it over here. Now, here's the thing. Um, after I did all of this, I kind of got tired of the look of the house because I didn't think I had enough room for all the creatures, especially the flying creatures. All the wings of the Nidhogs and Griffins kind of got tangled up and it was very, very annoying. So in a second here, you'll see me kind of clean up the place. 
try to like kind of align the creatures but we're going to remodel our house here in a second and it's going to look a lot better here which is really really nice so we're going to do that right now all right everybody so we just got our bear and our elephant now i've done a little bit of work on the house now basically the house is drastically different but here i'll just kind of step back and show you guys so there's a lot to talk about here though it's all very like it's all very basic so i kind of added ramps up here made this floor bigger and added bigger chests over here and what i kind of did was i mean obviously you could see that this entire place is bigger all my animals are organized but i also added kind of like a little railing like a defense railing along the entire place even all the way around here and if we go to the herbivore kind of pen i did the same thing as over there i kind of opened it up a bit and made it open ceiling and i still have that roofed out but i just i guess i'm just going to keep the sheep there but just like the other place, all my herbivores are here. I moved the boar over here since it didn't really fit on the carnivore side. So I just finally, after like 16 episodes, I moved it. Uh, but yeah, basically I just added a railing around the entire side and you kind of see just like that. So there's nothing under it. It's just a simple railing. And yeah, I added a lot more stone troughs and I did get another griffin while I was at it just for giggles trying to think obviously i moved the big guy in there surprisingly he fits and then i also wanted a way to actually get a hold of the big boy so along here i made a little ramp so we could get to him now a couple of like the small things you might have not noticed which are really cool so a lot of these animals obviously can't fit through doors now the flying ones have no issue because they can just fly out but especially things well okay i don't know if i think the bear the bear cannot get through here so, I made a way for them to get in and out that is not the door. Because I know in things like Ark, they have the giant door. But I don't think they have that in Dark and Light. So, basically, the way they can get in is they can just straight up walk up the steps and fall straight into here. Now, if they want to get out, instead of going out the door, because obviously you can't just, like, fly. You can just go up here and kind of just jump out, just like that. And, obviously, no animals can reach up there, so it's not like anyone's going to jump in. And, of course, I had to use a lot of pillars at the bottom here just to make it all stand up. But, yeah. And I did the exact same thing with the herbivore pen over here. Obviously, if they want to come in, you can just kind of walk along this railing and plop yourself right in there. And then, if they want to get out, they have this little thing right here. And, once again, nothing can reach it from the bottom, which is really, really nice. Also, I shoved the turkey down here because this guy, I, I mentioned when we got him, he, he doesn't stop moving. He just doesn't want to stop moving. So, I stuck him down here. He won't be able to move. It might seem like he could actually move through here, but he actually can't. So, it, it does bother me, too. I want to put a railing over there so bad, but the game will not let me, sadly. But yeah, now we got a place that is all nice and organized. Of course, I rearranged spell towers, more ammo, and more essence. So we got one over here protecting this side. This one protecting like this like angle. There's one over there protecting that angle. And there's one over there kind of protecting the front. And there's one right at the front of the house protecting over there by the forest. So we got a full 360 spell tower view. So even if something does manage to get close or something, It'll get shut down, and let's just even say something crazy happens or run out of ammo or essence. They won't be able to break through the building. So, little, actually, here we can watch an action right now. Bam, 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 bam. Dead. See? Not, you can't even get close. I think there's, that's a dead animal over there. And Man, my, my house is legitimately a killing zone. But, I mean, I have to protect my animals somehow. If I lost these... these guys like obviously if i go out adventuring and i lose them fine but if i just like come back one day and everything's killed i'm stopping this series at that moment there's no reason for me to continue so i'm ma making sure 100 percent sure that these guys are all safe and of course the reason i decided to make this bigger is just because i was kind of getting annoyed with like the different animals overlapping especially the flying ones and nidhogs with their giant wings and with the mastodon i don't want to leave the big big dude just outside chilling I know I have spell towers, but I just don't feel safe, so I kind of gave him a place. Okay, guys, so that's going to be it for today's episode. Guys, if you enjoyed, make sure to like and a comment as it supports my channel, and I will see you guys later. God bless, and goodbye.